Ready? Here we go. It's a fast game, it's exciting. It definitely combines speed and power, um, accuracy. It's a lot of fun. It's really a lot of fun to get out there and beat the ball around. Good, back to center, come on. You know, all you need is a racket and a, a ball and you can probably find someone that's gonna bang around with you, beat up on you, or you're gonna beat up on them or just have a good time. All across America, men and women in wheelchairs are picking up rackets and heading into local clubs to become a part of one of the fastest growing wheelchair sports in the country, wheelchair racquetball. Over the next 20 minutes, you'll get to meet some of the top wheelchair racquetballers in the nation while checking out some exciting tournament action. But first, let's get an introduction to the game and some fundamental lessons from the number one ranked player in the world. Chip Parmley. Today I want to discuss the basics of wheelchair racquetball and the necessities to play the game. First and foremost are safety glasses to be worn all the time whenever you're on the court. Impact resistant lens non-breakable. Next item we want to, that we need to play is a racket with a safety strap so that when you put the racket on, it, if it slips out of your hand, you're protected as well as your opponent. Slide it on your wrist and you either spin the racket or in this particular case I have a slide on strap. Okay, the next item is a ball. I believe nowadays they're all blue so we don't have a problem with colors. The next item is a lightweight wheelchair so that it's easy to move around on the court. And last but not least, we need a roller on the front of the chair so that we don't scuff the floor. Those are the essentials to play the game. The rule differences from able-bodied and wheelchair racquetball is only one major rule difference. In wheelchair racquetball, we allow the ball to bounce up to two times before hitting the front wall. We can hit it on one bounce, two bounces, or no bounces, as long as the ball hits the front wall before it hits the ground and it's in play. In playing, the only way you score is when you serve. You don't score when you return of serve, only when you serve. Basically, we've covered the essentials of the game. And enough talk, let, let's get into playing and, and start with serve. The four serves that I'm going to discuss today are four serves that I use and they work real well for me. And they are the lob serve, the half lob, the Z serve, and the drive serve. With all the serves that I'm going to show, they're all hit from the same position in the court area. This is our service area from this line to this line. The serve must pass this second line and not hit the line to be considered a good serve. We have two attempts at serve to make a correct serve. You can go too long or too short, but you have, the ball has to be in by the second serve. In correct serving position with the racket, you want to grab the racket just like you're shaking hands with someone. Just wrap your hand around this way where it's comfortable. That becomes not only your serving position, but your forehand and for the most part your backhand hitting position. It's very comfortable. The first serve we'll show today is a lob serve. When hitting a lob serve, this is done mostly with arm and not wrist. When we're going to drop the ball, and always when serving, the ball must be dropped. You can't just hold the ball and hit it. It's not like tennis in that matter. You have to drop the ball and hit. The lob serve we're going to hit on an upward direction, whether we're going to hit to the opponent's forehand or to their backhand. I'll either hit to this side or this side. Probably two-thirds of the way up the front wall, and the ball should drop back in this corner uh, and make it a little difficult for your opponent to pick up. So the lob serve is a drop. So we watch the ball drops back. A little difficult to pick up if it's hit correctly. Here we go. Watch where that drops. Okay, that's a difficult serve. That's my favorite serve. 
A lot of really tough opponents hate it because it's too easy. They want me to hit hard at them. The next serve is a half lob. If you're finding that serve is carrying too deep, we'll move to a half lob. It's going to drop a little shorter in the court, make the opponent hit a different shot. Half lob, halfway up the wall. A little shorter, a little long on that half lob. Okay. That serve will go either way. I'm, I'm directing it to my backhand side now. You want to direct it to your opponent's weakness. If you're playing a left-hander, that's going to be to his forehand. That may not be your most precise shot. So you'll want to work those shots so that you can hit a lob to the right-hand side of the court, too. A half lob to the right-hand side. So actually, I'm showing you four serves, but they work eight ways. You want to perfect them both ways. The next serve, and one of the more advanced serves, but it's a very good serve to get your opponent off balance, is a Z serve. On the Z serve, we're going to try to hit it within a few feet of the front wall, catch a side wall, drop in this area, hit this side wall, and jump out. Let's try that one again. Okay, take a little speed off of it. And the final serve we'll discuss is a drive serve. A lot of players love this serve um, to try to work with, but I've never found it to be too effective because the problem is it's hit so hard, it gives you no reaction time to get out of the box. Whenever I'm serving, I drop and serve and pull out of the box so that I get an optimum hitting position. With the drive serve, we're not able to do that. The drive serve, you're dropping, you're smacking the ball hard down the line, and you're kind of stuck in this position here. No time to get out of the serving box. It's a good surprise serve. If the opponent of yours is picking up everything else you're hitting, it's a good one to mix them up with. Not something I would hit very often. Basically, I mean, when someone is injured, whether it be paraplegic, quadriplegic, uh, spinal bifida with kids, um, uh, amputees, I mean, they're all any kind of traumatic injury. Anybody that goes through that, we're really not sure what we're going to experience after. And people who talk to us, they're really, they can't really educate us as to what, what we're going to go through. And to make that transition to back into public view, I mean, a lot of people are real tentative to be out with so-called able-bodied people in a chair you're shorter and you look up to everybody so I think sport not just racquetball but I think sport in general is good for all disabilities to help you merge with the flow again I mean you really you don't to sit around home and feel sorry for yourself is really not the way you want to be and not the people that I know that's not the way they are you know it's something that uh, the quicker you get out and experience sport the quicker your mind is going to heal and I think that's the big thing with disabilities. You, you need to not only physically heal, but mentally heal. And I think sport does that for you. <laughs> yeah. When I'm on a racquetball court, nothing else exists. I don't care if there's work problems. Whatever problems you got when you're on the court, when I'm on the court, I forget all that. I mean, I'm in heaven when I'm on the court. That's, that's where I want to be. And, uh, when you clear your mind of, of obstructions and, you know, when you're upset with things and you can be upset about maybe, maybe the way you think life's treating you and you go and you beat the heck out of that blue ball and you come out uh, a little sweaty and beat up and tired, you're not going to be so negative with things. I know that. You're going to walk away and go, hey, you know, that's, uh, that was fun. Now that we've covered our serves, let's get into the return of serve. We're going to move back into the center position. And I like to stay approximately six, maybe eight feet off the back wall, lining up what I consider center court area. When I refer to center court throughout this video, I mean anywhere from center of the court this way, anywhere from six or eight feet off the back wall, all the way into your hitting area. 
into the service area. So that's your center court position. When I line up for return of serve, I'll usually roll back here and kind of put a racket back here to make sure I've got some distance between me and the back wall. I'm lining up facing the front wall, somewhat behind my opponent. When he hits into the front wall, I'm going to make an immediate decision whether it's going to be to my backhand side, which when I make that decision, the ball is hit, I turn my chair slightly to the backhand side. A very easy move, something everybody can do. From this position here, I'm able to hit my backhand if it comes to the backhand. If the ball carries deep and goes into the back wall, I'm still able to hit a backhand. Or if the ball drops shallow on me, I can turn and hit a forehand into the back wall. And after I make any one of these shots, I'm turning back to what my center court position, my hitting and playing position is. So all of those, you turn to the ball, but you immediately come back to center. If the ball is on the right-hand side of the court, I'm going to turn to my forehand hitting position, which I'm going to turn with my toes to the side wall and be ready to hit a forehand shot. OK, the ball comes out. I have a forehand here coming back to center. If it goes deep and comes off the back wall, remembering we have two bounces, so we have plenty of time, comes out, I have a forehand shot back to center. Very easy. If the ball drops on me and I have to move back here, I have a backhand shot into the back wall. And you noticed I turned immediately back to center. I'm not going to spectate any of my shots because that's where you get in trouble. If you become a spectator, you might as well leave the court instead of stay on because you're in here to play, and you have to do those items to play a consistent, strong game. Yeah, I played probably 99% of all my matches against able-bodied players. Um, I play in a league at the club, and that's in the, the able-bodied divisions. And I also play tournaments up there, able-bodied tournaments. And uh, that's basically all the playing I ever get to do. It helps me build up my self-confidence about getting out and doing things. If I can get in the court and play racquetball against a stand-up player and play good and you know maybe even beat him, I feel good about it after I get done and, and I'm a lot stronger you know, mentally to go out and do anything else I want to do off the court. So it can help you build up your attitude and your, your self-confidence to go out and do something else that might not have anything to do with sports or racquetball in general, but just you know that you've accomplished this, now you can go on to the next thing and, and tackle that. And I, I like the sport so much that I travel a lot and, and play tournaments and I'll just keep playing until I'm too old to play. Now that we've covered serve and return a serve, let's show you how to play the game. So far we haven't hit a ball really, so let's get into how we hit the ball. The first shot that we're going to work with is a forehand. Always when you're playing this game, especially with two bounces, we have a little more time than we expect. So don't get in a hurry. You have a little more time, take that time. The forehand, your hitting position, your toes are going to be facing this, that side wall, or the front of your chair is be facing the side wall. Your forehand comes from up here. You try to hit a flat shot with the good handshake grip, and you come through this way, coming back to center. So this forehand here, OK, out here, OK. That's our forehand from here and through. Front of the chair facing the side wall. The backhand, you're going to turn so that the front of your chair faces the side wall. You're going to reach out from here, flat stroke, trying to make contact with the ball as close to the ground as possible. The closer to the ground with a flat shot, the closer to the bottom of the wall in the front it's going to be. So the backhand is here. A okay, nice flat shot. You notice the follow through comes through. OK, that's right where I wanted it, right out here. Those are the uh, classic example, forehand and backhand.
Those same strokes are used when you're going to take the ball off the back wall. We come in here, we're set up for a forehand coming off the back wall, and the ball dies on us. So we don't have the opportunity to hit that forehand. So what we do is we hit a backhand and we send it up. So I'm set up for the forehand, it drops right through there. I hit that into the back wall, it's dying. Easy shot. It enables me to turn around and stay in the point. So the backhand, the ball's going to come by me. You see how that ball goes up? That's where the backhand is going to be. It's coming up with it so that it gets the back wall, up angle, comes into the front wall. Whenever I hit those, I try to run them to the left or the right hand side of the front wall so that when they come out, they stay up against the wall. We don't want those bouncing straight out here in the center and setting the guy up. So we want to keep them on the side wall. Same goes for the backhand. I'm over here hitting a backhand. If everything is perfect, that's great. I'm right here for the backhand. The ball comes off the back wall. I'm here for the backhand. But if it dies on me, I can't get behind it. So I've got to hit that upwards forehand. Here, boom. That's right where I want the ball. I couldn't have hit that better if I had planned it that way. So going into the back wall, forehand, it doesn't have to be a defensive shot. That was an offensive shot. Here, you see how the, the racket went up. It's not a flat shot into the back wall, it's an up shot. Here, into the front wall. Those basically cover our forehand, backhand, and the little variation that when we hit into the back wall with both strokes, how it varies. Easy game. It's not an ending, it's a new beginning. It really is. I learned that. So it takes some people longer to learn that than others. But your attitude is all important. And if you go out there with the attitude that you are the same person, because you are, and you want to do some of the same things you did before, and you're going to enjoy those things just as much as you did before, then you will. Um, but it's really a lot of it is in your mind. Um, racquetball is made for wheelchair athletes. It's, uh, it's in a restricted area, which is great for wheelchair athletes, particularly beginners. Uh, again, I make the comparison to tennis. When you start playing tennis in a wheelchair, it feels like you're spending all your time chasing down tennis balls that are 50 yards away. In racquetball, you don't have to do that. That little blue ball is going to come back to you. And it's wonderful uh, because you can just go and play on your own if you don't have a partner who's at your level or nobody else in a chair near where you live. Racquetball is wonderful to just go and work at by yourself, and you can get very good that way. There's really nothing you cannot do. If you want to do it virtually anything you did before, you can do it again. Uh, you may have to do it a little bit differently, but there's a way to do it. Here's a few tips I think you should try to remember. Number one, when serving, I like to serve from the center of the court, and after serving, I back out of the court, back out of the service box. Another one, always watch the ball, so that when I serve, I'm going to watch the ball come off the opponent's racket so that I can react, so it cuts down my reaction time. Whenever the ball is hit to one side or the other, I'm going to turn my chair. The game becomes much easier when I know what shot I'm going to hit. It's a backhand, I'm turning to the backhand. It's a forehand, I'm turning to the forehand. And that leads into the final little item that I feel is very important. When you're this position you hit, you come back to center court. The game is played from center court. The game is won from center court. It's not won from the sidelines. Now I think it's time to play. I want to introduce you to a good friend of mine, Gino Bonetti, with Greater Pittsburgh Rehab and president of National Wheelchair Racquetball Association. He's been involved in wheelchair racquetball for a lot of years, and he's great fun to play with. Why don't we hit a little, Gino, and uh, see how we do, OK? bounces would have helped, wouldn't it, Gino? God, I love that. Uh. Woo, skip that thing, buddy. If you can't find a wheelchair player in your neighborhood, God, it's great fun playing with a stand-up player, especially if you get lucky and beat them occasionally. It's going to go the other way, too, though. Ooh, that would have been a hinder. I was in his way. And that's one of the safety things about the game. It's a gentleman, gentle ladies game. You don't want to hit anybody. If you're in the way, play it over. When you mention wheelchair racquetball to someone, they look at you kind of funny and, and say, well, how can you play wheelchair racquetball? I can't, I can't walk. Um, indeed, uh, wheelchair racquetball is just another avenue, as many other sports are, of 
going out there, um, fighting for it, and achieving the, your goal. It's a good challenge, you know, every day, I look at, at every day like it's just another challenge. Too many people give up and they, sh they should have just kept on trying. It's very frustrating. You're going to be chasing the ball around and thinking, man, I, I really can't do this, but stick with it. It's a great sport and you will improve. You'll improve every single time you play. I think life is full of challenges, and if you don't challenge yourself to, to the maximum, you'll never know if you're able to participate in, in anything. Um, go out and give it a try. Life is not over. Uh, it's a new challenge, and you do, do things a little bit differently than you would standing up, but everything you've done before, you can do it again.